Hurry, Colin, ambulance. I gasped. My husband who always mistreated me had collapsed on the floor, sweating profusely. The paramedics arrived promptly, quickly checking my husband's condition and putting him on the stretcher. Then they turned to me, are you his wife? Aren't you? Could you come with us to the hospital? My husband was put on the stretcher and looked at me with pleading eyes. I looked him right in the eye. No, I will not, I said firmly, with no hesitation. What? My husband's voice came out as if he had lost his mind. This man is a stranger, so I am not coming. Please take care of the rest. Wait, Ava, what? Wait! I then confronted my husband with something I had been carrying in my pocket for the past few days. The moment he saw it, his face turned even paler. How do you treat me like a slave all these years? This is my revenge. I will never forgive you. My name is Ava. I'm a 36-year-old housewife. I live in a rented apartment with my husband, Jack. I was introduced to Jack by a colleague at work when I was still working as a full-time employee. My colleague had a lot of friends, and I was often invited to parties. I am more of an introvert and like to watch movies or cook by myself. I was not comfortable with large group activities, so I kept turning them down. One time, a colleague invited me to a barbecue with his friends. At first, I refused as usual, but my colleague insisted, and I ended up participating. On the day of the barbecue, there were so many people there. One of them was Jack, who later became my husband. I was having a drink at a little distance from the group of people who were having a good time when a colleague of mine came with Jack. According to my colleague, he wanted us to meet each other for the simple reason that we seemed to have similar interests. I was surprised at the suddenness, but Jack started talking to me. He was nicely tanned and was clearly an outdoors type. When I actually talked to him, I found him to be sociable and humorous. I had thought that Jack and I, who preferred to be alone and endure people, would not get along, but as we talked, we found out that we had common interests just as my colleague had said, and we hit it off right away. We exchanged contact information on the spot, and we even made plans to meet up on our next day off. We went out for dinner and shopping several times, and we ended up dating. After several years of dating, Jack proposed to me, and we got married. Jack had always been kind to me, even before we started dating. He was the ideal man to take me out of my indoor lifestyle. That didn't change after we got married, but over the past few years, he started to do and say things that made me feel a little uncomfortable. I quit my job and became a housewife because Jack himself wanted me to. However, he often makes sarcastic remarks about it. For example, when I got sick and was late cooking dinner, he would say, Hi, sorry I was sick today. I had a rest earlier and I couldn't get up. Can you go take a bath first? Ha! Huh? What's that? You're a housewife, you should at least take care of the meal. Jack never worried about my health, which made me very sad. Another time I said, Hey Jack, there is a reunion coming up in my hometown. I'll finish my chores so can I go? He replied, Suit yourself. Well, being a stay-at-home wife is great, you know. I envy you, Ava. You get to play around with the money your husband makes. He's usually really nice to me, carrying my purse and bringing me flowers after work, but sometimes he acts like a jerk. I even thought that maybe he wanted me to work, so I suggested that I take a part-time job, but Jack insisted that was not the case. In the end, I was still a full-time housewife. One day, one of Jack's relatives called me out of the blue. I picked up the phone, feeling a little defensive. The relative on the other end of the line called my name in a panic, Jack's mother has collapsed. 
I froze for a moment at the unexpected words. According to my relative, she had gone to visit my mother-in-law a few hours earlier. She had recovered enough to be able to sit up by herself, however, it was difficult to do anything without someone's help. I'm glad she's able to get up. I wonder if she will be able to walk again if she continues to do her physical therapy, I said to Jack when my mother-in-law's discharge date was approaching next week. Then he started to say something I didn't understand. Oh yeah, are you ready? We'll be leaving this house next week, so you'd better start packing our stuff. I couldn't understand what he meant. Jack seemed annoyed as if he didn't like my reaction. We don't need this house since we are going to live with my mom at my parents' house. You're still as stubborn as ever, aren't you? That meant I'm going to live with my mother-in-law after she gets out of the hospital. I never heard anything about that. Cancel the lease? What did you decide to move in together without talking to me? Have you already cancelled the lease on this house? When I said that, my husband became even more grumpy. Of course, I've already cancelled the lease. It's the right thing for us to do as a family, to live together and help her. Don't tell me you don't want to live with her, do you? I'm the one who made a living, so I won't accept any complaints, he said and went back to his room with deliberate footsteps. I never thought that Jack would take such a hard approach. I can't believe he's cancelling the lease on this apartment. I have no choice but to move out. I know he is worried about his mother, but this is too much. I sighed deeply. A few days passed, and suddenly I was living with my mother-in-law. I had never been a caregiver before, so everything was new to me. I have to spend most of my day feeding, bathing, and toileting for my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law didn't want me to take care of her, and she hardly communicated with me. Furthermore, when I tried to talk to her, she would hide in bed, saying she was in pain. When my mother-in-law was healthy, we didn't have a bad relationship. In fact, we sometimes exchanged the delicious-looking snacks we found at the department store. Perhaps she was too frail to care for others. On the other hand, my husband Jack, who had forced us to move in together, rarely came home after work. He would go out for drinks and come home in the morning. Even when his day's off, he would find some reason to go out. When he comes home, all he does is play video games in his room. I decided to talk to Jack while he was playing games. I know you can't avoid working overtime or drinking with your colleagues, but can't you at least help me take care of your mother when you're at home? Or I would like you to help me with the housework, I said. Jack replied without looking away from the screen, what are you being so naive? Housework and caregiving are both your jobs. I'm tired from working, you know. Oh, I'm almost out of coffee, go make me some and clean this room, okay? And oh, take these to the dry cleaner. I need them by Wednesday. My husband spoke one-sidedly and threw his work clothes at me. This time, I was annoyed and retorted, that's enough. I've been doing housework and taking care of your mother every day for the past month without a break. Why can't you at least help me a little? Jack then slammed the game controller down on the desk and stood up with a mighty thud. How dare you talk to me like that? Who do you think you owe your livelihood to? If you have a problem with me, then get out. Come on, get your act together and get out. Well, well, I feel sorry for my mom. She's going to be left alone without anyone to take care of her. That being said, I couldn't say a word. It's true, I only have a little money saved up, and I can't leave my mother-in-law who can't do anything for herself. I held back, picked up his suit, and left the room. After about six months of such a difficult life, my mother-in-law suddenly passed away. I woke up in the morning and went to check on her like I always do, but that day she was no longer breathing. 
I called an ambulance and took her to the hospital, but it was too late. Jack was in tears and sad. I don't know why, but I couldn't cry. I felt cold when I saw Jack crying. Without hesitation, I thought to myself, you didn't do anything to help her. And when I realized that I don't have to take care of her anymore, I felt a sense of relief. I felt guilty for feeling that way. Time passed so quickly. After the funeral, I suddenly realized that two weeks had passed since my mother-in-law was gone. It's time to organize her belongings. After my husband left for work, I started cleaning my mother-in-law's room. I put her favorite clothes and accessories into the cardboard boxes, one after another, but there weren't many, so the work was over soon. Next, I opened the cabinet by my mother-in-law's bedside. There was almost nothing in it, but there was a big pen on the bottom shelf. I thought I had seen it somewhere before, and it was a can of assorted sweets I had given her when she was still in good health. I wondered why it was there. I opened the lid of the can. Dear Ava, there was a letter inside. When I picked up the envelope, I found the words Dear Ava on it. I hurriedly opened it and looked inside. In trembling letters, there was a message for me. Ava, I am sorry for making you take care of me. I was ashamed of myself for forcing you to work for me every day. I was also ashamed of my son, Jack. I know how bad he was to you. Ava, you should leave him and live your life the way you want. My mother-in-law knew everything. She knew that her son was being selfish and that I was suffering from it. At the end of the letter, she wrote, I'm glad that I was able to spend the last days of my life with you, Ava. I cried, thank you. At that moment, I cried for the first time since my mother-in-law passed away. It was as if everything I had been holding back was flowing out of me. I cried and cried until my tears ran dry, and then I made up my mind. I would divorce my husband. Ten days had passed since I found a letter from my mother-in-law. My husband is still treating me like a slave. Ava, I'm missing one of my socks. Where is it? Oh, and take my car to the car wash today. You've got nothing to do, right? He's going out with his colleagues for golfing today. I guess he's completely forgotten about it, but today is our wedding anniversary. Well, I don't even care about it anymore. What are you going to do while I'm golfing? You can't just sit around, you know. You have to prepare dinner, clean my room, clean the bathroom. You have a lot to do. His arrogance left me speechless. Hey, you hear me? Bring me my sock and a jacket, hurry up, or I'll be late. At that moment, Jack fell to the floor, clutching his stomach. He was in pain and sweating. He told me to call an ambulance, as if he was trying to squeeze out the words. I froze at the sadness of the situation, and my husband yelled at me, hurry up. You're really useless. Can you even call an ambulance? Hearing these words, I became strangely calm. Then I called 911, and within minutes, an ambulance arrived with paramedics. The paramedics quickly assessed Jack's condition and placed him on a stretcher. As they put him on a stretcher, they said to me, You're his wife, aren't you? Would you come with us to the hospital? Jack looked at me with pleading eyes as he was placed on the stretcher. I looked him right in the eye and said, No, I will not. I said that firmly, with no hesitation. What? Please take care of the rest. Then I confronted Jack with something I had been carrying in my pocket for the past few days. It was the divorce papers that I was forced to sign when we had a fight a while ago. My husband had always told me that if I disobeyed him, he would serve me with the divorce papers. Jack tried to snatch the divorce papers from me, but he couldn't seem to move due to the pain, so he had to lean back on the stretcher without any effort. 
Excuse me, but please leave now, as I said, the paramedics finally took my husband away in the ambulance. He must have been looked upon as a poor husband whose wife has given him a divorce. He should be embarrassed. I watched the ambulance leave and then left the house. It took a long time, but the divorce papers were accepted, and the divorce was officially finalized while Jack was in the hospital for a week. I was busy packing my belongings and sending them to my parents' house. Then one day, I ran into Jack when I was at the grocery store. Ava, please don't do this to me. You love me, don't you? Please don't leave me. I admit I've made some mistakes. You listened to me no matter what I said, so I just got carried away, he said. The overbearing attitude he had a few months ago was gone, and he looked completely pathetic. What are you talking about? The divorce is already finalized. It's too late for you to act so fragile. Go ahead, live your life as you please, I retorted. He didn't really think that I was going to divorce him, and he looked quite shocked. His hands were shaking, and his face was turning pale. Well, that's that, then. Bye, I said. It had been six months since Jack and I had divorced. He had once visited my parents' house, bringing the intercom and calling out my name so loudly that I had no choice but to see him. Sure enough, he wanted me to get back together with him. When I kept quiet, he began to reveal his current lifestyle to me. I can't cook because you forced me to do all the housework. I eat only TV dinners or eat out. I have gained 10 pounds since the divorce, he confessed. It's true that he put a lot of fat on his face and stomach that you can see at a glance. In addition, he doesn't seem to understand how to do laundry. The shirts he wears are wrinkled and smell weird, making him look even filthier. I finally realized how great you have done, Ava. If I don't do something, Jack said, sobbing, the people at the company won't like me. Jack continued sobbing, chief tears. In other words, he wants to treat me like a servant again. There's no way I'm going back to that. No, never. If you make any more noise, I'll call the police, I warned him. I treated him like he was a stranger. Then Jack started to be afraid of the word police and left the house, crying. I'm sure he wouldn't get involved anymore. I hope so. My ex-husband seems to be leading a very inconvenient life. On the other hand, I was leading a fairly comfortable life. For a while, I was staying at my parents' house, but now I manage a small apartment and live alone. Despite my standard of living being much lower than when I lived with my ex-husband, I still cherish this life. Having my own time is something I deeply value. Initially, I thought finding another job at my age would be challenging. However, a friend of mine happened to know someone who retired, and I was fortunate enough to land a job to fill her position. The freedom to spend time and money solely on myself brings me immense happiness. There's no one dictating what I should do anymore. From now on, I aim to take care of myself at my own pace. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.